The Human Centipede is a trilogy of movies that serves as a warning of what can happen when you let the Dutch make decisions. My films are uh, quite horrible. And a trilogy of interconnected movies creating a Human Centipede cinematic universe because God has abandoned us. All three movies, written and directed by Tom Six, your average Dutchman, are actually educational, family-friendly children's movies about the science of human anatomy. Movies that came to be due to the unfortunate realities of undiagnosed brain damage, and movies that exist because one man thought, this seems like a good idea, when absolutely everyone else was like, Tom, please take your meds. Tom has stated that a major influence for this original idea was Jeffrey Epstein's favourite movie, Pasolini's Saulo or The 100 Days of Sodom, a movie that accurately depicts the inner workings of a Reddit mod's mind, which honestly tells you everything that you need to know. That Tom Six is a man of culture, and that he really likes chocolate pudding. What the existence of these movies really tell you is that there's a horrific amount of undiagnosed mental illness out there, and much like gaslighting, being told no is a made-up concept, and you can basically do whatever you want. The first movie begins with the terrifying sight of a German man as we follow them around in the average day of the life of a German. His morning begins by looking at a picture of Rottweilers eating ass, followed by him staring at a man taking a dump, and then fucking shooting him. How dare you fertilise those plants? We then see two basic white girls, Lindsay and Jenny, misunderstanding the concept of a map and getting lost in the woods on the way to a party after visiting from America, where they then proceed to knock on the front door of a house to ask for help, where the owner proceeds to make this face after seeing two young wet girls. He must be an anime fan. These girls are too old. After getting abducted by the friendly man, the same man from the beginning of the film with the fascination with this guy's ass, a doctor, Dr. Joseph Heiter, a name that serves as an amalgamation of several Nazi war criminals. You know, the baddies. A mixture of two doctors named Fetter and Richter, with the first name being a direct reference to Joseph Mengele, the guy with the really small genitals, and someone who had a fascination with twins, similar to this character, Dr. Joseph Heiter's fascination with conjoined humans and how he can make them for himself. Heiter even means cheerful in German, which is notably evident by the extreme amount of cheer on his face. Heiter was played by Dieter Laser, a method actor who supposedly stayed in character constantly during the filming, which must have been pretty easy for him on account of being a German. But a style of working that may have lent itself to a more interesting menacing performance on film, with the downside being a supposedly tense set, with him shouting at other cast members and sitting alone to eat his dinner so they don't contaminate it with their nasty Americanness. And apparently at one point an altercation even occurred after Dieter accidentally kicked a cast member in a scene because I too would never miss an opportunity to fight a frail old man. He then disposes of the truck driver for not being a good match, whatever that means, I don't use Tinder, and decides that with the larger, hairy truck driver not being a good fit for these two young women, Haida knows exactly what will work. A Japanese man. I think I've seen this video before. Be careful, the last time the Japanese and Germans got together, it didn't go so well. Haita, a retired and world-renowned Siamese twin surgeon, is completely obsessed with the idea of bringing people together, despite a lifetime of taking them apart like a deranged divorce lawyer. Which is evident by the multiple conjoined twin paintings around the house, painted by the director Tom Six from that thing he calls a brain, as well as the previous centipede experiment that turned his dogs into dog. Heiter then proceeds to tell them all in excruciating detail how he's going to perform a surgery that disables the use of their legs by making them quite literally disabled, before then going on to tell them that he's going to sew them from mouth to anus like a really weird BDSM video or something. A surgery that Tom Six actually consulted a surgeon on, who for some reason didn't immediately contact the authorities, but instead found a way to make it 100% medically accurate. It might be a 100% medically accurate surgery, but there's a 100% chance that some weirdo's jerking off to this. It's you, isn't it? After a brief but feeble escape attempt involving tearing open her own artery, Lindsay and Jenny are recaptured and the surgery is performed. A surgery that involves cutting their knee ligaments, pulling out teeth, creating flaps from their cheeks, and sewing their lips to someone else's anus. What do you get when you take two American girls and a Japanese guy? A human centipede. After the surgery, they wake up in extreme agony due to still being in Germany, with Katsuro in the front, Lindsay in the middle, and Jenny in the back. After taking away their physical abilities, Heiter attempts to take away their free will by trying to train them like dogs, despite them very much not being dogs. That's not a very nice way to talk about women. He locks them in a cage at night, attempts to make them fetch, and forces them to eat from a dog bowl. Well, he forces one of them to eat from a metal bowl. 
the rest get the flesh bowl. After eating, Katsuro faces the unfortunate reality of human digestion and asserts his dominance by shitting in a woman's mouth. Something which causes him to cry, as if that's not a thing plenty of people online would pay a large amount of money to do. Know your worth, Katsuro. Jenny's facial wounds aren't looking too good, on account of them being directly in someone else's sphincter hole, which might have something to do with all of the double chocolate McFlurry she's been eating. No wonder the machine is always broken. Reality starts to catch back up with Haita, once the high of kidnapping and mutilating people for fun wears off, and he's paid a visit by the local police. I don't know, something to do with all the people you forced your poop fetish onto. You might want to do a better job at hiding their cars next time. After attempting to drug them, because police love free drugs, they leave to get a warrant, because this man is European and must be stopped. And much like every pet fantasizes about doing, Katsuro stabs Haita in the foot and shin with a scalpel before biting a chunk out of his neck because he doesn't really need it anyway. After turning himself into a walking horror movie cliché, well, crawling horror movie cliché, Katsuro leaves Haita alive lying on the floor instead of leaving him dead lying on the floor and drags them all upstairs by the power of his asshole. Horrified by his character's dumb writing and horrendous hemorrhoids from that stair climb, realising that there's no way out, he unalives his very existence, giving Lindsay her supper early as his body evacuates the entire contents of its bowels. As Lindsay's begging for seconds, the police return with warrants and a strange urge to shoot an old German man. Heiter manages to kill one of them, despite being half a vegetable, before trading shots with the second police officer, where he's shot in the head, because sharing is caring. With Katsuro being lazy and taking a nap, Jenny dies from the infection because her head game is weak, and Lindsay's stuck in the middle until the end of time. That's or until the police come looking for their missing officers. They'll get worried when they don't return to tell them about how many minorities they've harassed today. The human centipede is certainly something. And by something, I mean a movie for intellectuals. And if you disagree, then you're probably either German or sufficiently medicated. Coming to be due to a conversation Tom Six had once about stitching a child molester's face to a fat sweaty truck driver's ass, the human centipede is the epitome of do whatever you want, because why the hell not? Can you do it? Sure. Should you do it? Probably. Another inspiration behind this bizarre and outlandish idea came to be after he directed the bizarre and outlandish Danish Big Brother, where he found it interesting to watch what people would do when they thought they were alone, unaware that they were being observed. Which now puts absolutely everything into perspective. I too would want to force people to consume feces after watching Big Brother. Now that the movie about the day and the life of the average German man is over, it's time for a movie about the everyday British man, an intellectually stunted small person. So all of them. Six stated that he wanted his first movie to be as authentic as possible, and certainly achieved that with the inclusion of Germans. So he decided to take the opposite approach with the second movie, and gave it the tagline 100% medically inaccurate, just like my bipolar medication. At one screening of the movie, the film's distributors handed out complimentary bath bags to the audience, and actually had an ambulance on standby, for the pure fact that The Human Centipede 2 is a movie about short people and the dangers that they pose to society. Apparently someone actually had to use that ambulance. They wanted to taste their lunch again. What you need to understand about this movie is that it's a movie for people with very normal functioning brains. Just like Martin, our main character. And you, a person with a perfectly normal functioning brain with very respectable thoughts, undoubtedly likes horror movies. That or you've fallen asleep and this video has autoplayed. If so, sweet dreams, I'm proud of you. And because of that, Popcorn have reached out to me and have asked to sponsor this video because I'm hosting an exclusive event for one of their online surveys for The Exorcist Believer. That's right, 3,000 lucky people have the pleasure of looking at my face as I talk words towards you. With limited access to the event containing exclusive footage of the highly anticipated movie, you have the opportunity to make your voice heard. The event is 100% free to attend, as long as you get there first, and all is required is a passion for movies. And not just the weird ones you don't tell anyone about. With a chance for viewers to win two $100 Amazon gift cards, the event is going to be a dialogue between you guys, the studio, and me. Backed by Popcorn, a leading platform in audience research, make sure you sign up while you still can to have a say with the Hollywood movie making process, and also to see my face. That's gonna be there. Clicking the link in the description and signing up would serve as a great way to help support the channel, because if enough of you show up to look at my funny looking face, Popcorn may have me back in the future. In this movie's universe, the original film exists, and Martin, our short king, works in a secluded car park and uses his privacy to obsessively re-watch the first movie as it's his current special interest. Kinda like you with this video to help boost it in the algorithm. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and send me all of your life savings. What's got to be inspired from many of the original film's criticisms of what if your movie causes somebody mentally unstable to create their own DIY-ped, 
I don't know, Barbara. What if they do? Martin still lives with his mother. Have you shit yourself again? Which is fine, I'm sure it's a financially stable decision, and I'm sure she loves him very much with all of her heart. Anyway, she hates Martin due to his father going to prison for horrifically molesting him as a child, because child molesters are like Pokemon, and you've got to catch them all and make them fight to the death. His mother, whose brains he ends up turning into mashed potato with a crowbar, after she finds and destroys his human centipede-inspired scrapbook that he was using to journal all of his thoughts. Like take the contents of his mother's cranium and remove them. Martin decides to start acting on his urges and begins kidnapping people by shooting them in the legs and feet before placing them into a medically induced coma with a crowbar. And I would be questioning how a man like this was granted access to a firearm in the UK, but then I realized it was set in London. After killing a warehouse landlord and taking the warehouse for himself, kind of mirroring the doctor's behaviour from the original movie, as he genuinely thought that he could give free drugs to police officers like their kids on Halloween night, and force them into an early retirement with no one noticing. He eventually ends up with a large group of forced consensual volunteers, whose human rights are merely a suggestion. Including, but not limited to, a pregnant woman after firing into her car with a toddler in the back seat, two women who caught him jerking the gherkin with sandpaper, his neighbour who came to help him with some household chores, and the actress who played Jenny in the previous movie by luring her over to the UK under the pretense of auditioning for the latest Tarantino movie. Who would come all the way to the UK just to have their feet stared at? There's British people here. After incessantly watching the movie, Martin's confident that he's mastered the fine art of surgery, so proceeds to get started by hammering out people's teeth, cutting open their kneecaps with blunt kitchen knives, and staple gunning them together while they're awake to create one big happy family. After all of that hard work of being irreversibly crippled by a short bald fellow, Martin realizes that his new pet must be hungry. So being the loving, compassionate guy that he is, he funnels food down their throat to bypass the pesky task of chewing before injecting them all with laxatives because proper digestion is for losers. The human excrement is the only thing that isn't black and white in the movie because despite shooting everything with colour in mind, Six decided that he wanted to create the most accurate and real-life depiction of England that he possibly could. So he made it look like shit. And if you wanted further proof that Tom Six made this movie literally just to offend everyone, Martin then wraps barbed wire around his Redacted. and then proceeds to brutally Redacted. the woman at the back of the centipede because apparently the smell of human excrement really gets him going. And after thinking that he'd accidentally acquired a double kill on the pregnant lady and leaving her in the corner unused, she suddenly wakes up due to the trivial amount of pain caused by giving birth and runs to the landlord's car, where she then proceeds to use a rather unconventional method of contraception and crushes it beneath the pedal. After the fastest spawn kill known to man, Martin heads back into the warehouse to see that his centipede is broken into two, as well as his heart as his creation abandons him. Losing his short little temper, he responds in the calm and rational way of shooting a bunch of people before he's outsmarted and outmaneuvered by a woman who then proceeds to insert his own pet centipede into him before it cuts back to him at the car park like nothing ever happened. Except it did happen, and even worse, it happened in London. And if you wanted to see London in colour for some weird reason, a full colour version was released with the Blu-ray trilogy, a version of the film that almost certainly loses a dramatic amount of disgusting grime, as its exclusively filmed handheld shots really help emphasise just how much this movie really shouldn't exist. And the funny thing about the movie, you know, beside the movie itself, is Lawrence R. Harvey, the guy who plays the typical British man in this movie, seems like such a genuine and sweet person in real life, who shares a deep passion for horror movies, and who is probably on some kind of watch list after appearing in this. Just like you, after making it this far into the video. Next is a movie about the current state of the American medical system. A movie that sees Dieter and Lawrence return, but not as Heiter and Martin, but worse. Americans. Bill Boss, a half-American, half-German prison warden, and his secretary Dwight. Much like the human centipedes themselves, these movies shouldn't exist, but are also all connected. All three movies are designed to be watched one after another, with Bill watching the end of the second movie as Martin watches the end of the first movie. It's like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but better. Bill is what you would call the average League of Legends player. That being absolutely insane. He engages in fun little activities such as waterboarding inmates with boiling water, castrating inmates for its nutritional benefits, and assaulting his secretary for the inexcusable crime of being a woman. Due to the extreme dislike of his prisoners and the manners in which he lets them know this, Bill is absolutely terrified of what they might do to him if they ever were to escape 
which causes him to look deep inside of his soul and think about the type of man that he's become and do absolutely nothing about it because fuck those guys. The stress mixed with the alcohol and undiagnosed schizoaffective disorder causes Bill to have terrifying and violent nightmares along the lines of him being stabbed by the inmates in the kidneys where his wound is then used as a slightly warm fleshlight. I honestly couldn't tell you why this movie isn't more liked. To cut down on costs caused by castrations and firing off automatic weaponry indoors, Dwight comes up with the logical and sane conclusion that they should create a human centipede. And upon hearing the most stupid, ridiculous and downright bizarre thing a person could possibly say, Bill agrees. Thinking that incarcerated prisoners barely count as real people, they sit down with the director of the movies, Tom Six, where he further sells them on the idea of sewing people from anus to mouth because apparently they've got really disturbing poop fetishes. But the difference is this time is that they want to set up this centipede in a way that could allow inmates to be attached and detached when needed, so not only will its occupants be allowed to leave the peed once their sentence is up, but they'll walk around for the rest of their days with multiple scars around their lips looking like they used to dress at Hot Topic to serve as a deterrent for other people committing crimes because everyone will know just how much of a freak you are for eating human poop. And after finding out that a prisoner can't be attached to the centipede due to medical issues, Bill decides to lower the burden on the American taxpaying citizens and fires his gun into the man's colostomy bag wound because any hole's a goal. After finding out that his poor old secretary was violently beaten unconscious in a recent prison riot, entirely caused by Bill and his blatant disregard for literally everything, he proceeds to violate her before insisting that she's kept at the prison hospital where she's then accidentally connected to the centipede to be given a portion of irritable bowel syndrome for her dinner. The governor, played by Eric Roberts, that one guy who starred in that one movie that one time, is shown the innovative new way to save money in the prison, where almost for a split second considers the human rights violations of these people before quickly remembering that he's in America. It's ingenious. And according to Tom Six, Eric was apparently a fan of the original movie, making it a pretty easy process to have him on board with the third installment because apparently he's a man of culture. A man of culture who's shown what Bill's done to the death row and life sentence inmates as he's cut off their arms and legs because who really needs them anyway? After being exposed to the world's first human caterpillar, the governor leaves disgusted before quickly returning after contemplating the financial benefits. Bill then shoots Dwight through the brain because short people give him the ick, and the movie then comes to an end with him screaming from the top of a tower while completely naked. A scene which is a pretty good representation of the movie in its entirety, as it's 90% dear to screaming racial expletives at minorities and 10% human centipede. A very deliberate decision by Tom Six, after realising that after the human centipede 2, he was going to have to find another way to disgust you, or cause you to cringe. With the tagline for the movie being 100% politically incorrect, and uh, yeah, the third instalment being somewhat of a final farewell to the series, and a chance for the actors to finally show up to set without a horrific case of pink eye. It features a handful of characters who'd appeared in the previous installments, like the actor who played Katsuro in the original movie, one of the police officers, and Martin's therapist from the second film who was interested in getting inside more than just Martin's brain. Much like a little piece of my soul when watching this trilogy, unfortunately Dieter passed away back in 2020, so may he forever play with the centipedes in the sky. You will be missed. You terrifying German man. And speaking of mist, I'm missing a piece of my sanity after my sadomasochistic behaviour sent me down this deep rabbit hole that resulted in me making a video 20 something minutes longer than it really should have been, all because I let the intrusive thoughts win again. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you're interested in getting access to the uncensored versions of these videos as well as access to the private discord, well how about considering signing up to become either a patron or a YouTube member. It's a great way to show some support to the channel while simultaneously getting access to a few perks. YouTube isn't exactly fond of the type of content I make, I couldn't tell you why to be honest, so any and all help goes a really long way. And if you're interested in some Big Will merch, how about taking a look at my clothing brand Morbid Minds, clothing that is scientifically proven to make you infinitely more attractive, information gathered from the incredibly trustworthy source known as me. So starting off with this week's new YouTube member signups, a big shout out to JUMK, Alexis, Dreyazak, Nine Feet Dance Monstrum, Wesley Mayer, A Sato, Playboy Froggy, Thiago Uriart, Chef Sheep, Henry Hicks Burdock, Dr. Venom, and Lockie Davis. 
Heading over to this week's new Patreon signups, a massive thank you to Sarah Pierce, Dara Vey Hazel, Xavier Pons, Robert Acosta, Ryan Williams Moore, Elijah Knight, Josh Galloway, Laura Voigt, Jenka Rigaldo, Chewy Karen, Sad Cat, Bonnie Thompson, Johan, Richard Hitchcock, Pico 8, Jimmy Caldrone, Jesus Rosario, and Mashed Potato. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.